Some people are so keen on trains, they want to have one right there in their house. People were into model trains long before radio-controlled cars and slot car sets, and no one is more hooked on them than Robert Burgess, who's been working on this massive setup for 12 years. Building all the scenery and all that sort of thing is one of the most time-consuming aspects of having a big layout like this one. Robert, how do you do all this? Um, basically, it was um, built up over a period of years, over a wooden framework, uh, polystyrene foam was shaped into the hills that you see. Plaster was applied to that. Various paints were applied to that again. Now you can get all the stuff ready made, but Robert prefers to have that little bit of extra control. The trees were all handmade, and from there it went on. Gradually buildings were added, lights have been added, signals made, and so on. Um, cooked real dirt to make get the ground effects and scenery foam was added for weeds, etc. Robert's setup is based on an area in the American state of Kansas and he tries to get it as realistic as possible. I'm sick of living here in the middle of these damn rail yards. Why can't we move? I've told you, Doris, because Robert super glued us to the spot. Yeah, well, what if it rains? <laughs> Never marry a model. Some of these trains look pretty old and worn out, but it's something Robert does on purpose. It's called weathering. It's basically a technique so that the trains look more realistic and not too shiny and new. OK, Robert, look, the, the train goes past, it goes round and round. What, what's the appeal of all this? Uh, the main appeal to me is actually doing the modelling. Well, I'm glad Richard stuck us up here. From here you can see all the way to the other side of the room. Yeah. Oh, look. Here comes a train. Uh, shut up. But I know to a lot of other people it's actually the operation of trains in a realistic manner. Model trains work on the same principle a lot of real ones do. You turn it on, electricity flows down the rails to the engine, and away it goes. I wonder if... Oh, nothing. <laughs> Phew. It's only 12 volts. For once, I don't get electrocuted. Robert's trains are all replica diesel engines, but you can also get models of just about every kind of train imaginable. runs a model and craft shop in Wellington. Peter, when someone wants to get into train sets, what's the first option when they're buying a train? Well, generally, most people start off with a set, costing around about $230. Gives you everything you need to start with. Transformer, set, train, tracks. And from there, you can just expand it uh, at your will. Whatever your purse can afford, you can expand on. this rate, I don't think we're ever going to finish this building. Look on the bright side. We're being paid by the hour. Yeah, but where are we going to spend our money? Robert, do you ever let kids play with the train set? Occasionally under supervision, I've let some play. My daughter has got quite keen, keener than my son, actually. Oh, OK, what about me? Do you think I could uh, have a wee play? No way, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time the Santa Fe train was ten minutes late? Oh, only about a thousand times. Anyways, it's your move. <laughs> I snuck in while he wasn't looking. Well, you need heaps of space if you're really going to get into this. But even with one train, one track, and a few controls, this can be heaps of fun. 